Hello and welcome back to Incredible Inverts and Other Animals with me, Phil. And today's video is going to be footage of my first attempt of making flake soil. Where I'm going to go through all the processes uh, for this basic recipe uh, that I found online of making flake soil. But what is flake soil? Uh, well, flake soil is a basically a fermented uh, oak substrate stuff that uh, we use or beetle breeding, uh, specifically, or specifically more with uh, things like rhino beetles and stuff for their larvae and stuff to, to eat and stuff um, because a lot of those people eat a hell of a lot of wood and stuff and kind of needs kind of good protein levels and stuff to get major males and stuff so flake soil is something that's used fairly heavily um, kind of around the world uh, in terms of yeah re rearing up beetle larvae so, and uh, I've started kind of buying it and using it a little bit myself. Um, I thought I'd have a go at making some because uh, it's not the cheapest of things to buy. So, um, so I thought I'd have a go at making some. And uh, yeah, I'm going to show you my results, uh, show you how I made it. It's been taking a few months uh, to do, and it does take a few months to do, kind of pull together and then allow it to, to ferment. Um, and it's taken, what, three, four, maybe even five months uh, to make this now. So, so yeah, there's a, it's a long process uh, to do it. So you know, if this works, uh, I think it's worked. But you know, if uh, you know my people like like it and stuff, I will make more. But I will continue to buy it as well, uh, purely because I don't have the space to make big batches of it all the time. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at me making or attempting to make flake soil. Okay, so here we go, we're making flakes, and I've got the recipe from Richard's Invert, so I'll put a link down in the description. So, first we've got 200 grams of plain flour, we have 50 grams of sugar, and then we have 10 grams of brewer's yeast, right, along with water, oh, so these are the main stuff, and then uh, 10 litres of oak sawdust mixture um, and we'll also mix in uh, some some frass as well uh, into this uh, to kick start it all off and then of course we've got a tub for it all to go into oh. so as I've got the recipe from Rich's inverts I'll put a link down in the description uh, to his recipe on his website so first we want to get five grams of sugar into a measuring jug so obviously you want to use a, a set of scales, so I've just got our basic kitchen scales uh, for this, um, so yeah, just use those. And once you've got 5 grams of sugar, you will then want to add in 10 grams of the yeast into that as well. And this yeast I just, uh, I think I got this just off of eBay. So I'd already uh, measured up uh, 10 grams of the yeast, so I'll put that in. And then you want to mix that with 500 ml of lukewarm water. So again, another measuring jug. Already got that. No need of scales for this bit. Pull it in, and then you want to stir that well. And this is all to awaken uh, the yeast, so we can get that sort of going. And so obviously you stir that, and then uh, basically sit that to one side. Uh, for around half an hour, 30 minutes, um, just to, yeah, just basically awaken that yeast up. So, so stirry, stirry, stirry. So you've got this kind of brown looking liquid. And then I say, yeah, just set that aside for half an hour. And then whilst uh, your yeast and sugar and um, water mix is uh, so getting ready, you can get your dry ingredients into the tub. Um, so yeah, this is the sawdust. I got again. Actually, just got this off uh, off eBay. So, so there's a hundred percent oak uh, sawdust. Oh, so you're going to be just putting it in. I'm just and you know the moment just because I didn't want to spill it absolutely everywhere because the box came and it is actually packed full. Um, so yeah, didn't want to spill it everywhere. So just putting that into the box. You can see it looks really good quality, um, which I'm happy with because yeah, I hadn't really ordered uh, oak sawdust before, so wasn't really sure, obviously, you know, what quality it was going to be like, but lucky enough, yeah, this felt really good quality, um, which was nice. 
Um, so get all this into the box and then you want to add in your other ingredients. Right, now I've filled up the, uh, the box with all the sawdust, just giving that all a, just a mix through, make sure there's no lumps or anything like that. Now I've it all out, making sure everything's all nice, you know, really, really nice, which it looks it. Now I'm gonna add the rest of the dry ingredients, so adding in the plain flour on top, you know, does feel like I'm baking here, but I'm baking uh, stuff right without even sticking in the oven. And then adding in the rest of the sugar, and then get my hands in and give that all a good mix up. Now, so you want to give this a really nice mix, get all those ingredients around the place, you know, make sure it's kind of, try and get it kind of evenly uh, distributed around the tub. So really, really nice mix. So it looks all nice and even. And when done, it'll look like this. And then after, I say after we wait the half hour to start in the, uh, the water mixture, also yeast and sugar get that mixed in as well so pour that in get all the bits in get all the yeast out of that jug get it all in and then again you want to get mixing so mix this all around try and get again you want it you know you don't want this wet sort of thing uh, basically you want it so that you can form clumps you can form balls of it but not wring out any more any moisture at all any water out of it and um, so you may need to add some more water so i did just gradually add some more water into this because it was still actually quite dry um around a lot of the sawdust so but again you want as you see there a bit of dust coming up there so you can tell it's still quite dry um and you want to obviously add in water gradually so, because again you don't want this sopping wet or anything like that you don't want to be able to wring out any water um if you squeeze it you'll be able to again get to a point where you can squeeze the ball and it holds its shape um and stuff so just adding a bit of water gradually every now and then now i did add in a fair bit um as could be different for different people of course as well how much you may need some people might need less water uh, and some people may need more water than I, I added. So I added um, what I thought was actually quite a bit, to, but it seemed to be doing the job. And like I say, it's my first time ever attempting to make flakes, and also I was a bit kind of like, oh, I don't know how it should feel like before, you know, once I've sort of mixed it all together. Now, um, but it's definitely getting there. You can see it's, you know, it's changed colour a bit. Now it's definitely looking. Uh, sort of a lot more uh, sort of moist um, and that's what you want and then uh, again just getting down to the bottom making sure that there's no you know kind of puddles of water sitting at the bottom there mixing it all around um, that's what you really want to do is get your hands in there and just really really mix it mix it well mix it well and as you're mixing it you want to break up any potential clumps as well um, so yeah rub it between my hands and my fingers just to make sure nothing's come up there we go make a ball it's holding its shape not wringing out water that's basically what you want and so from my understanding so, and then it's a case of uh, once that's all done again just give another go yep nothing wringing out it's sort of holding its shape so I probably don't want to add in any more water so third time's the charm just to make sure yep nice in this case is just yeah evening it all out so, uh, I'm just checking the recipe again just to make sure and then in this case of flattening it uh, basically try and basically you want to compress any air out of it so as, as far as you can and um, you don't want air pockets so really go around flattening that with your hands so that's what I'm doing here um, and again you can't really go sort of too much again because you don't want any air pockets uh, within it so you go around flattening it all around making sure it's all nice and flat really compressed down so you can see what you know what started off as half this tub full of uh of sawdust is now like a quarter of a tub uh, just because it's because we've moistened down now i'm just getting rid of all the excess uh sawdust from my hands a bit before i go on and do the next bit 
which is to put the lid on. So, and then you want to set that aside uh, somewhere that's, you know, kind of around 23 degrees Celsius. Um, that's kind of ideal for fermentation. And you want to mix it well every two to three days kind of until fermentation has completed. So, um, and you know it's done and it's worked if uh, it smells like earthy soil, uh, basically. So, yeah, I mix this uh, yeah, every few days and then compressed it again. And uh, as I say, it's taking me a bit longer because originally it does say it should take about a month at 23 degrees. I think mine must have been a bit cooler as it did take longer to do. But this is what it's ended up looking like. Uh, now it smell, does smell kind of earthy and soily, which is nice. You don't want it to smell acidic or acrid or any, anything like that or smell horrible. You want it, yeah, a nice earthy smell and it to feel kind of nice in the fingers as well. Give it a rub and give it a good old sniff. You know, you don't want to be going Ugh! at the smell at all. You want it, like I say, nice earthy smell. Uh, that you then know it's actually it's worked. Fermentation has worked, and it to look kind of soil-like. So, to me, this looks like it, it worked um, for my first first ever time going, uh, which is fantastic. I was kind of worried that it wasn't going to work. Stuff, or I would get something wrong and stuff and um, you never know with these things so, but yeah so far this looks hopefully like it's it's done the job and it's worked and will be really good uh, for my rhino beetle species and you can use this uh, with various uh, you know fruit flower beetles and um, so you can use it with your Satona days um, I'll probably use it with like the Mechanarinas and um, you can use it um, with pack noders and new sellers and Stefan Reiners and stuff as well, absolutely fine. But, uh, um, and it's just a good option, I think, um, rather than necessarily going out and collecting uh, subtitles. So this one you can control a lot more. You you know you're not taking it from a wild habitat, or anything. Um, and you're using obviously a product that may just get kind of thrown in the bin otherwise as well. And so I've been using you know, a secondary product, um, of course. So for me, yeah, baked soil is uh, it's probably quite a, a sort of a win-win substrate. And here's just a bit of a closer look at it as well. So um, yeah, it's fairly flaky, hence the name sort of flake soil. So and like I say, there are other things you can add into it at the uh, at the beginning. There are various additives. Um, I didn't add any of those in, uh, so it's just basic mix. Okay guys, so that was my attempt of making flake soil. What do you guys think? Um, yeah, it's my first time ever attempting to make flake soil. I think it's worked. It looks alright to me, it smells alright to me, and that's the main thing. Uh, so I will be dishing that out across my various rhino beetle larvae, so my Zala Troopies, my various Dynasties that I've got now as well. Um, and also I'll be using flake soil with, uh, hopefully when I get Calcosoma, uh, larvae got at least an egg that I've been found. I don't want to dig around too much stuff in there, um, but yeah, we'll be using flake soil with those larvae as well. So, so if you did want to give this a go, I will be linking down uh, the link to Richard's Inverts website with uh, his recipe for uh, the flake soil. That's the recipe I used uh, for this. is a very simple uh, to follow recipe. It explained everything really well. I found um, so yeah, it seems that I've or at least again, I think I've been successful in making it and stuff, and that's really all thanks down to yeah to Richard's uh, recipe. I don't mean that nice and simple. Um, as I said, I do still buy flake soil as well, so purely because I don't necessarily have the space to make batches and batches and batches of it all at the time. And I've take you know a ten litre batch is taking me you know almost half a year to make <laughs> sort of thing. Um, so I still don't buy and I buy this flake soil. Uh, from the spider shop, so uh, it's easy to get hold of. They often do, you know, they regularly have it in stock. So, and what I will be doing is popping a link down in the description for uh, the flake soil from the spider shop. Now it is an affiliate link, and um, so what that means is that I get, if you use my link, you get a, I get a bit of commission uh, from that, and no extra cost to you. A number of us YouTubers and Instagrammers, TikTokers, and stuff um, have been invited to be affiliates of the spider shop. Uh, kind of trial run thing so um so yeah if you see any links from me uh, for the spy shop that's what they'll be they'll be affiliate links so 
But like I say, it costs you no extra. We get a little bit of it, man. And obviously, anything we get from that, or anything I get from that, will go back into the channel. So, um, but I do recommend this face oil. I've been using it myself. And so it seems a very good quality to me. It's the only flake soil apart, you know, that I've actually used and bought. And, stuff. and uh, I'll continue to buy some uh, whenever they have some available. Um, as well, just because it is so good for, like I say, the rhino beetles. And stuff. So if you are looking at getting into rhino beetles, especially, like I say, Xylotrophus, Dynasties, Calcosomas and stuff, you do want to start getting some flake soil. And, stuff. and even for some of the, uh, the sag beetles. As well, unless there was a kinchy Pacific, um, which I don't keep and stuff, and have, I don't think I've ever kept any kinchy ones. Yeah, I've never used kinchy. No, um, but yeah, if you did like this video, guys, please do give it a thumbs up. Pop some comments down below, and if you haven't yet, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hit that bell for notifications so you know next time I upload another video. But until next time, guys, take care, stay safe, and keep rocking.